Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. That's hard. It's hard to wait patiently on the Lord, I believe. You know, and if you said, well, I've been praying about this for uh, a long time. Let's remember eternity. We don't even have an idea on eternity. Eternity forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So maybe you've been praying for somebody to come to salvation for 40 years. Continue. Wait patiently on the Lord. 40 years is nothing compared to all of eternity. We maybe need renewed encouragement in that. And let's just take a minute. Heavenly Father, we just pray for people out there that people have been praying for for years, that you would help bring them back to you, bring them into fellowship. If they're in sin, we just pray that you would make them miserable and uh, drive them to the foot of the cross to come back to you and uh, to just uh, confess and forsake and move on. If they're a saved person that's living in sin, if they're not saved, that they would come to know you as Savior. We just pray individually right now for just people uh, as we think of different ones that we all have in our families and just ask that that would be the case in Jesus' name. Amen. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. He hears the prayers of his children. Don't forget that. The fervent effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You're righteous because of what he did. And he wants to answer the prayers of his children. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my goings. Now again, <clears throat> set my feet upon a rock, and now I know. You know, that he is, psalms are songs, and we can rejoice that he brought us out of that pit of despair, knowing that we couldn't do anything to save ourselves. Now, in John 3, it's, he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. I know I talk to a lot of people, and you know some people say, well, I've always been a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. I got saved when I was 13. I also wandered for a period of my, time, my life. Uh, but when I got saved at 13, that the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. He doesn't take back the gift of salvation. So when you trust him, you have it. No matter how you live, a Christian shouldn't live in a sinful lifestyle. But I believe we'll see people there who got saved as kids or got saved and, and they still are his children. Uh, and I believe there's a lot of people that are miserable and not living right to the Lord. And he wants them to come back to him and start doing things for him. But they're losing out on all their eternal rewards, but they can't lose their salvation. And then I think there's people who are in churches who say, well, I've always been a Christian. You can't have always been a Christian. At some point, you have to have been born again where you made faith the thing you're trusting in, where you trusted in Christ alone. If you're, if you're saying that, I would, I would say you want to question if you ever really came to Christ. If you say, I've always been a Christian because you can't always have been a Christian. You must be born again. You have to come to a place where you realize you're a sinner that needs a savior. Your works, your church, your religion, your doing certain things, whether they be communion, sacraments, whatever you want to call them, all those things, if you're trusting partly in that and doing those things, if you couldn't just trust Christ and even walk away from doing all those things, if you couldn't do that, you're trusting in more than what Jesus did on the cross. When he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. That means paid in full. And if you're trusting what he did on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you're only trusting him, you have salvation. And that's what he wants you to be trusting in. Now, he, he wants you to have your feet planted on him and establish your goings so that you're doing good works for him. And he hath put a, and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust 
in the Lord. It doesn't say many shall see it and fear and shall do good works in addition to trusting in the Lord. It says shall trust in the Lord. We want people to come to salvation because of what we do. We want to have that new song in our mouth. We want to walk in a new way so that people can be converted to him trust in him because they see a different way of life. If we're not living any different, boy, we're going to learn, we're going to see one day that we've lost a lot of reward. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O Lord, my God, are the wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. You know, when Jesus walked the earth, it said that uh, they wrote many of the things that he did. And it, they supposed that if all the things that he did were written, it would fill the books of the world. Uh, that's really been happening since the time of Jesus. So many write books and, and it's all it should all be about him. We want to remember that we want to go to the main source, which is the scriptures, the Bible, uh, for our sound doctrine. So many are going away from sound doctrine. First Timothy chapter four today, uh, they're falling away into deceit. They're not looking at their practices in their own groups uh, that aren't following biblical practices. Verse six: Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou not opened, burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. You know, in the Old Testament, they would have to bring a sin offering a, a, and all these different sacrifices. That isn't what the Lord wanted. The Lord wanted a contrite heart, a heart turned to him. He, he doesn't want things that we do to save. He wants us to be trusting him to save. Now, people did those things who were saved. Because they knew that was what the Lord required of them, that he wanted them to do. Because And thus is the reason they, they wanted to live rightly, because they didn't want to come with a sin offering all the time. It was costly. Sin costs. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm uh, 119.11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The more we study God's word, the more sh we should want to live for him. And, it, you know, he says he will write a law in our heart that we follow after. I have preached righteousness in thy great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. Okay, when somebody is saved, we should want to tell others about Jesus. <laughs> it should be first and foremost on our lips. It should be something that we want to uh, declare. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. Now notice, it doesn't say I've declared my faithfulness and my salvation. It's singular, pointing to God. The T words are singular in the King James. Thy faithfulness. Who's God's faithfulness? Thy salvation. God's salvation. There's only one way to be saved, and it's trusting what Jesus Christ did on the cross. You know, so it's not about uh, our works. It's about his work on the cross. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. We don't want to hold those things in. We, we, we you know, in the scripture, if we, we hold it in, even the rocks would cry out the glory of God. He's called us to go ye. That means ye is plural. Why words are plural in the King James? That means everyone who's saved, go ye, everyone, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's what we're called to do. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore, my heart faileth me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish, e wish me evil. Let them be desolate for a reward of their shame to say unto me, Aha, aha. Let all those who seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. 
But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, my God. Boy, we are poor and needy when it comes to righteousness. We could have all the wealth in the world, but if we don't realize that what we have makes us poor and needy when it comes to getting to heaven, we need to rely on his righteousness to get there. And yet the Lord thinketh upon me. He wants all men. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to uh, repentance, have a change of mind, recognize their sinners, and trust in the Savior. We'll end there for the week. May you be continually waiting patiently for the Lord this week. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.